liquor bottles. Hey, that was a bit below the belt. Yep, but true. You got me. <laughs> oh my god. My cloaca. Alright, we have two codex entries now. And then I can go to the weekend house, I suppose. Oh, we've got quite a few things. Not bad. Alright, so what do we got? Here it is, the Council of Twelve. So although Clawville is a monarchy, the actual power and jurisdiction, aside from the King, are in the hands of the Council of Twelve. Or, as most animals think, entirely... Oh, or, as most animals think, entirely, and the King himself is only a puppet and a symbol. The members of the Council are the mightiest animals in the city after the King, employing not only politicians, but influential businessmen as well. The Founding War. It was the Great War between the Alliance and the Swamp Clans that finally decided Clawville's fate and raised the city in the lands of the Alliance among the great colonial powers. This marks the beginning of Clawville's time, meaning it occurred exactly 942 years ago. Damn. That's everything. Right, Weekend House. Whoop. Bum, 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 bum. Oh, good scene. Well, if there's one thing I'd learned during 20 years of detective work, it's that if someone wants to meet you at a remote location at night, you should bring an army for backup. <laughs> one time, me and Marty were stupid enough to underestimate a situation like that, and we never really recovered. Wait. And yet, here we were again, about to step alone into something oh. hauntingly familiar. I can't tell if this is something... Remained, as the old dogs say, balls to the wall. No, I can't tell if that's something that's happening now, or if it's like, what has happened in the past. Because that was someone dead. Uh, oh this dear. This gives me the creeps. I wouldn't say I like it either. Let's take a look around before we go inside. Textbook. I'm telling you, it's a trap. Shut up, Marty. <laughs> The hell is that? We got a shoe. Yeah, it's still a, a yellow shoe. Damn, it's not a good sign. Maybe she just lost it when she hurried into the house. Mm. Yeah, right. Do you think it belongs to Natasha? No idea. Do you think I measured her feet when I was in her room? <laughs> not sure I want to know, but I wouldn't be surprised. Should we take it? Hell no, I'll buy you one if you want. <laughs> this is police business. Do you mean the real cops? Do you think... Kneel <laughs> on a race. <laughs> My, My God. is tingling. Damn it. Well, thank God I have a weapon on me. Or two. When do you not have one? Fair point. God, he sleeps with his guns. Stop staring at it. You're freaking me out. Okay, okay. I just like shoes. Furry hell, Marty. I don't want to know. <laughs> Stops. Oh god. I just like shoes. The word. So, this is the word. What can I say? The message is loud and clear. Yeah, you're not wrong. What matters is who is it for and what does it mean? I can't misunderstand that if I wanted to. We'll see. Wait a second, did that bimbo put a spell on you? As you used to say, don't let it cloud your objective judgment, boss bird. Watch who you're talking to, boy. Yeah, I'll have you know, I'm your senior. You wrote that down? It burned into my mind. <laughs> don't really need a word uh, to write it down, it's not exactly something hard to remember. You wrote that down? Entrance. Marty, before we enter, did you bring Big Bertha? Of course. She's in the trunk. It's time to get Her Majesty out. That's what I like to hear. Car trunk. Aha! <laughs> Number two, Big Bertha. Let's go. Hello, my beauty. Just don't point it at me. <laughs> Aw, scared? Take it easy. I swore I'm not gonna shoot you again. Very gallant of you, partner. What, are you still pissed at me? I'm happy to remind you why you got shot the first time. I get it. Just shut the fuck up already. Oh my god. <laughs> These puns. It's the nothing. Uh, what was that? 
Nah, forget it. Just an old quote from a movie. It means it's fucking dark in here. <sighs> Flashlight. I didn't bring one. Yeah, me neither. What a pair of fucking professionals. Yep. But you do have a shotgun with you. We should have shotguns for this kind of deal. Is that from an old movie? No, it's an original. Figures. Mm. Oh, God. Ooh, that's an S. You can see the crack. There's a body and it says haw. Oh, dear. She was lying on the floor as if she was sleeping. She looked peaceful, almost. Oh, it was Deborah. A large pool of blood ruined the picture. Poor, delicate Deborah. Maybe you were too pure and innocent for this city. But in the end, its filth pulled you under. You know, no animal can swim in high heels. Wild gods! Fuck even! Yeah, it's her. Deborah, the girl who came to my office. I figured, but what the hell happened? Was it Natasha? Is this what she wanted us to see? No. I mean, I don't think so, Marty. She seemed very attached to the girl, and I believed her. Furthermore, she has no motive to kill her. Natasha meant some object. Something maybe the killer wanted, too. And the poor girl was trying to protect it. Did she seem that kind of girl? She risked a lot simply by coming to see me. She would have done it for her mistress. Why is she naked? Was this sexual? I mean, there's no sign of struggle. She seems untouched. Maybe she knew her assailant. Was it a lover? This looks premeditated. So far, the messages have appeared in weird places, but this, this is a new level. It's no longer just about empty threats. Well, maybe Natasha's on her way here right now. Or she was already here and something happened to her too. Kidnapped or worse. Those are possibilities, but we can't wait. We don't have time for guessing. Search the house, search everything. The room's not trash. Whoever did this wasn't looking for the same thing we are. Or they knew exactly where to find it. Wait, what are we looking for exactly? I have no idea, but it's something important. Things like that have a way of getting noticed when you come across them. Amen to that. Oh my god. Well, that's not what I expected. Dead body. So there's a purse. Just dead body. Message. Here too. Yes, but this isn't about Deborah and wasn't meant for her. It was meant for Natasha. Obviously. What have we gotten ourselves into, Sonny? I don't know, Marty, but let's get ourselves out of it as soon as possible. This is just a really weird image. <laughs> Human body with a tail and a God. Animal head. I really shouldn't be here, you know? It's New Year's Eve. I should be out partying, not dealing with this shit. Well, it's a little late for that. I told you it was going to be a rough ride. What you told me was it's going to take a few hours and it's practically nothing. <laughs> and you believe me. Yeah, very awkward pose. I was an idiot. There you go. I don't see no wound, though. <laughs> yeah, no, it's a tail. Poor girl. Pretty How sure. How old was she? <laughs> I hope so. Twenty-five. Yeah, something like that. What are we gonna do about her? Nothing. We can call the police anonymously, of course. Is that everything. Poor thing. That's everything. Poor, th Poor thing. Anything interesting in there? Yeah, I think there is. New item! There's nothing else useful in there. Back out. I unlocked something. I wonder if it's the... is it info? Oh yeah. We found Deborah's body in Natasha Katsenko's weekend house naked with a message on her back. Oh, she was in an Impala, that's it. Could not remember. Yeah, I don't have anything new. Okay. 
Uh, family photo? What the f- <laughs> uh, It's so weird. Because <laughs> they're all dressed up. This must be Natasha's family. Yeah, wealthy. Do you think she's from the Stavonian Tsar's family? Oh, nobody could have survived that massacre. But I'm sure this family was also close to the fire. What is she doing here anyway? What, an alias? Keeping secrets, and now this case? Do you think it's all connected somehow? Let's not draw hasty conclusions, Marty. Look at those clothes. Could it be a military family? Maybe. Or Stavonian fashion. Your intuition always astounds me, Marty. What would I do without you? <laughs> there you go. We can't take it with us, but remember what you've seen. Yes, sir, Boss Bird, sir. What are you trying to tell me, Natasha? Okay. What else we got? Strange sculpture. We're painting. Hmm. This... What is this exactly? A human. Mythical creature. Quite the cult in Iveria. The whole country's full of these statues. Does it mean anything? They say humans are the keepers of secrets and the messengers of chaos and destruction. You don't think... Let's take a closer look. Okay, well, I got another entry. What's this? Can't look at any of these. Hmm. Damn. Oh. Just like in the adventure books. Rich animals are all insane. Do oh. Have a point. It's a handle. Okay. Well, you can't be serious. <laughs> Is this some kind of... Yeah, it's a riddle, Marty. But it doesn't make any sense. Why use something as simple as this when a four-digit number is almost impossible? An idle whim, or the riddle has a meaning. Maybe. Four animals into four places. What does it represent? Think, Marty. Where did we see four animals holding something in their hands? Yeah, okay. What do I have that's new? This? SN. Could be the initials of a person, a, a place, a company, or a club. Too many possibilities. But we must find out where it's from. Okay. And I got another codex entry. Which is which? Humans! The human is a mythical creature appearing in many stories and legends. Usually, it appears as a wise creature, a keeper of secrets, but it also has a dual nature because chaos and destruction follow in its wake. According to most, the essence of its symbolism lies in the fact that certain secrets require a substantial price to be paid. By uncovering these secrets, we bring a curse upon ourselves. Some believe humans are the messengers of... Is it Kvatiti? The god of nothingness and usually depict them as angels with wings. Oh. We have a weird painting. It's an exceptionally beautiful piece. What does it depict, I wonder? I have no idea, Sonny. It's so art, I'm scared to have an opinion. <laughs> nice. Yeah, it really is. Nice. Okay. What else we got? Oh, that's how I can leave. There's a phone? We should call the department. Anonymously, oh. of course. Do you still remember the number? I haven't called my own workplace in years. Cretan. Of course I remember. 555-111. That's an easy number. Since when? Since they invented the telephone. <laughs> yeah, of course. No, I knew that. <laughs> I was just testing you. Yeah, right. My god. Okay, right, pick it up. There's five. Oh, so good. Such a satisfying phone. Boom. There we go, dial. Are they gonna pick up? Corvo PD, how can I help you? Uh, 
I found a corpse. A woman, she's dead. Cold. The address is Rochester Street, 37, Flowerville. Rochester Street 37. Write it down and hurry up for the sake of the wild ones. Hurry, hurry. Like Harry, Harry. Yep, like I've done it before. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. How can you forget a case like that? How many times have you seen a three-headed monkey in your life? What? I have a memory of a chicken, you know. That's for sure. Now let's get the hell out of here. <laughs> I found a body. She is dead. <laughs> what a voice. I don't know if you could get extra info for calling random numbers. Maybe. Don't look like there's much else. Empty fireplace. What? Oh. Oh, right. Okay. Oh, dear. Huh. So what do we got? We have a lion. Oh my. Oh, is it going to be like what the wild ones are? It's probably something like that. We've got a tiger, a fox. What else is there? Wolf, I think? Eagle, lion, fox, tiger, sheep. Huh. And then do I turn this? I guess so. Oh. It's a vault. Oh, a safe. Behind the fire? Hello there. What could this be? Maybe a piece of a painting. And there's some kind of squiggle on it. The signature of the painter? Yeah, I can't make it out. Okay. You think you'd do this before you rang the police? It's a piece of a painting. Judging by how well it was hidden, I'm sure this is what Natasha wanted to show us. But Natasha's not here to show us. So a piece of a painting? That's it? And what's that smear on it? It's too illegible to be a signature. It could be anything. Well, maybe Natasha can help us. After all, this is what she wanted to show us, isn't it? Well, that's if we find her. She should be here by now. True. Well, then what's next? How about we peck around town some more? We could do that, but I think we should gather what we know and try to figure out where we can go from here. Uh, bourbon in my office. Ah, uh, you know what? After all this, I could use a drink. Right answer. <laughs> New location. Oh, I wanted to read. Crap. So we have Hotel Atlas, we have Clawville PD, Mullins Newsstand. That's new. Sure. New location. We oh. Say hi to the old beaver? Oh, the music. Sure. Mullen is an old, old friend, so he certainly deserves a hello. And we do need information. God, I love this song. Know as much about Clawville as the old woodchomper. An encyclopedia in the flesh. Yeah, he always has something. I don't know, it's like elevator music. <laughs> it's really good. Uh, did I get a codex thing? I did not. I did get a new place though, which is probably Mullins' place. Mullins' newsstand. A tiny kiosk in the heart of the Calavera Hills. It's small, almost invisible, but hides one of the most crucial things in the shithole. Knowledge. A oh, book. What's this? Dead Silent Night. So, you've got like a... A book. And a koala? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so the Clawville Chronicle. Chronicle. That's a lot. And they're out in the rain. Oh, they're ruined. The Clawville Chronicle. The most read and probably the most biased newspaper in the city. It's supposed to be a royalist rag, but the separatist overtones are getting stronger and stronger every day. We have Chandler's. 
Chandler's used to be quite a prestigious cafe. Magnificent animals had breakfast here, and in the evenings, philosophers and writers would get drunk together and argue. The place is now just a second-hand bookshop, just a shadow of its former self, like so many things in this city, like me. Okay. What else we got? Mullins. Some things are indestructible, right? Yeah. Mullins kiosk's been here since I was a little chick. My old man used to drive here from the other side of town for his daily papers. Jesus. Yeah, many still do. He certainly is something. Mullins a wizard from a forgotten age. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> oh yeah, that was another thing we got was Mullin. We unlocked his info. So, Hercules Mullen, of course, that's his name. A beaver. Old and full of secrets, like the city itself. Mullen is an old comrade from before the times of the chicken police, so from terribly long ago. He used to call him Uncle Mullen, even when I was just a fresh patrolman. Even though he's only a couple of years older than me, he represents many things I wanted to become. Honest, wise, and always cheerful. Mullen knows almost everything about everyone, uh, yeah, about everyone worth knowing. We should use this to our advantage. Okay. Mullen! What kind of voice is this guy going to have? getting older and older, and Mullen's not changing a bit. Where's the justice in that? He's just eternal. Like an ancient god or something. Or the personification of the city. <laughs> what a lovely thought. But if the city took shape, it would most likely be some kind of vermin. Yeah, true. But that wasn't uh, very uh, politically correct, coming from you, pal. Hey, you know I didn't mean it like that. Yeah, I know, Marty. You're too good for this world. Oh, thanks, boss. It wasn't a compliment, Marty. <laughs> Mullen never closes his kiosk, not even on New Year's Eve. My God. Papers must be getting so wet. Oh wait, he does have like a cover here. I highly doubt that would stop the papers here getting wet though, but whatever. Hey, Hercule. What's up, old friend? Hello, me lads. It's good to see you. <laughs> what are you doing around here where you never see a cat, go boy? <laughs> oh my god, he's got a great voice. We're working, Uncle Mullen, just like you. But I'm afraid we're also walking a little bit outside the law. But it's New Year's Eve. Couldn't it wait a bit? Whatever the case is, it can't be that serious. I'm afraid it is. Maybe you can help us with a few things. After all, you know everyone in the city. <laughs> what a compliment. But of course I'll help if I can. I know you ever since you appeared in the city. Young, fresh, full of ambition. And little Marty had been just a chick when he was already coming here every day with his daddy, hey? <laughs> You're like me son, so yeah. Oh, thanks, Uncle Mullen. Oh my god. That was the best voice. Even on New Year's Eve. <laughs> of course he's Irish. <laughs> oh my god. What's up, old man? Is everything alright? Uh, me bones are creaking. The eyesight's getting more and more blurry. And sometimes I hear sounds that aren't even there. I think I'm getting old. Well, maybe I've gone crazy already, but the old ticker's still ticking. So, here I am. Ah, it's good to still have an old familiar spot in the city. Ah, nothing lasts forever, boys. So, what is this dirt you've ended up in again, eh? Ah, uh, just a simple case, strumming personal strings. That's why I couldn't refuse it. You know the tune. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Same old song, eh? Yeah, it's a classic. Oh my. Is that everything? Him and no. Seems him and me are very much alike. Okay. So, what is it you want to know? I'm at your service, me lads. Me lads. So, pal. Let's see. Alright, now I can actually ask stuff. So. 
Oh, but... Even a ruthless gangster, that's for sure. But he's not bloodthirsty or stupid. You're not in danger until you're in his way. And that's not so easy to manage as the whole city's in his hands. How come they never tried to approach you, Uncle? What? <laughs> What the hell? They wanted to buy the whole area and build some huge parking garage on it. Mongrel Mick, Ibn's number one pug, came here and threatened me more than once. If I hadn't dug me heels in, the others would have sold up. The lawyers behind me, even Biff, the owner of Chandler's. But I told them, over my cold dead carcass. Oh, looks like it worked. <laughs> I'm too much for them lads, or I'm just too famous around here to get rid of. We could say Ibn's almost almighty, but he avoids scandal like rats avoid fire. <laughs> That's a good one. Oh, I'm a poor nobody, my lads, but my name still carries meaning. This place has always belonged to my family. If my dead body had been found here or in the times, it would have caused a scandal, even without any evidence. So, you usually listens to reason. Yeah, when I talked to him tonight, he seemed confused, dissolute, and impetuous to me. That's uncharacteristic. Are you sure it was him? Are you joking? Ibn Wessler's not usually confused with anyone else. Ah, of course I'm joking. Beaver humor, you know? <laughs> Nobody gets it. Not even the beavers. <laughs> Good one again. Oh God! Right, Marty. Hey, Martin, my lad, what's up? How's that beautiful wife of yours? Laura's perfectly fine, thank you. It's crazy you could grab an amazing woman like her, son. Are you blackmailing her with something? Ah, I missed your famous beaver humor. <laughs> I'm just messing with you, son. Anyway, you look good. You're in good shape. You look more like a turkey than a rooster, if you ask me. Um, thanks. This is priceless. Thanks, Hercule. We'll be back again soon. Yeah, sure will. So Monica, wait, Monica Rosen? Monica? Monica? Is that the hummingbird from the uh, PD? Nice girl. She used to come here for I think. a while, but I, I think she moved downtown. Yeah, she's the poster girl for work Oh, there we go. She lives in an apartment across from the PD, but sleeps at the station, if she sleeps at all. Some animals just race yeah, and race through the years of their life until someone stops them and makes them wind down. Is there someone like that waiting for everyone? Indeed there is, somewhere. <laughs> Usually not where we're looking for them. Yeah, right. So, Hercules. I always just say Hercules, even though it's probably not right. How's Desiree? What about her? She's still beautiful, and she's still my wife. And I still don't get why she hasn't let me already. Because she's too much like you, you stubborn old damn builder. You see, you're right about that, sonny boy. And, uh, the cubs? Cubs? <laughs> More like jumbo cubs. John sees a hotshot lawyer in Galadia, and Timmy also left Clarville to try his luck in Grassmore. But who could blame them? Good move. Ah, yeah, but they visit me often, though. They're good kids. I know, pal. They're from a good letter. <laughs> if you say so, sonny. <laughs> Hello, this guy. You know anything about a woman named Natasha Katsenko? Sonny boy, what have you gotten yourself into again? That lass is Ibn Wessler's protege, to put it politely. She's the crown jewel of the city. A shining new star. If you dare talk to a girl such as her, you can expect some serious lead poisoning, me boy. Well, I suppose I should have come to you first for advice. Doesn't matter now. We're in it, Uncle. Up to our combs. If you'll accept the advice of an old shaggy beaver, get to the end of it as quickly as you can and try to make it out with all your feathers. Yeah, that's the plan. But do you know anything about her? Anything uh, interesting? As I've heard, Natasha is quite a mysterious lass. She came from the Stavonian Sardom and fled to Clawville. But from what? No one knows. Some years of her life are shrouded in mystery. And that really means good. You're right about that. So, uh, that's your advice? Be careful. At least, sorry boy. And one more thing. 
What's that? Never fall in love with a woman like her. Thanks, Hercule. I wasn't planning to. <laughs> Nobody plans to, Sonny. Just take care of each other, okay? And always carry a good gun in your pocket. Oh, I always have one in every pocket, old timer. I know, Martin. I know. <laughs> okay, I learned a lot of stuff. We got stuff on Natasha. So, okay. Oh. Okay, whatever. I guess there's nothing new there. We learned about Imin. Dirty little paws reach every dark corner in the city. Even good old Mullen was approached by his men several times. And then we learned about Monica. Did Monica seem... Okay. We have Monica's such a workaholic that she even moved into the block opposite the PD, but despite the move, she still sleeps at the station very often. And then we have more on Mullen. So old Mullen's kids flew out of the nest a long time ago, but he's eternal and unstoppable, just like some kind of ancient rock the city is built upon. There it is. I think that's everything. <laughs>